It was the summer of 2004, the summer when we found the dead body of Fred Ames. When you grow up in a small town, anything other than the normal, boring routine is considered adrenaline-rushing, heart-pumping excitement. We would occasionally hear about dead animals, like the time Tommy Smalls told us about the dead deer on the riverbank near his house. We decided to investigate the rumor. A flurry of rats exploded from the corpse when Sean threw a rock at it. The explosion also released the stink of decay, making us gag and nearly vomit. But the story I'm about to tell you is not like that. This story is about the cold, dead body of Fred Ames, and it still haunts me to this day. My friends and I were riding our bikes in the scorching heat of early July. As we passed Tommy's house, he saw us from his yard and came running over to us with all the speed his chubby 14-year-old legs could summon. Guys! Guys! He was yelling breathlessly at us. It took him a few moments to catch his breath. (laughs) You know that old drunk Fred Ames? Yeah, one of us replied. I heard he was hit by a train a few nights ago, and Jeff said he saw Fred split in two. He said both parts were laying over on the bank in the weeds. He said it was the most awesome thing he ever saw. It took all of three seconds for us to decide that we had to see this for ourselves. Tommy got his bike and followed us down the dirt path that followed the tracks that the railroad men used to inspect the tracks. After several minutes of riding the road, Tommy yelled, There! That's where Jeff saw him! We threw our bikes down and ran up to the tracks. The four of us started to search, but it didn't take us long to find it. We followed the sound of the buzzing flies and the smell of decay to where the body lay. There was a small creek at the bottom of the slope, where his legs lay partially. His torso was a few feet away. The organs flopped onto the ground like oversized earthworms. It was obvious that some animal had already started eating him by then. I watched his fly scurried across and into his open, lipless mouth and down into the holes where his eyes had once been. Rigor mortis had frozen his hands into claws. The putrid stench of rotting flesh baking in the nearly 100 degree heat was almost unbearable, even from the distance we were. We stared for a few moments before someone finally said, Go touch him, Tommy, Mark commanded. Fuck no. That stinks so bad I might puke. I can't touch it, he said as he covered his nose. You're the one that told us about it. I'm not touching that nasty ass thing. One of you do it. Remember the deer? No rat's gonna bite me. No way. It might explode if I touch it. Nobody was bitten by a rat, Tommy, I informed him. Sean being the bravest one of us, and the one who exploded the dead deer, picked up one of the large rocks that lined the tracks and chunked it at Fred. The rock hit the corpse on the left side of the ribs. A hollow, meaty, bone-crushing crunch followed, followed by a gasp. We looked at each other, but the sound hadn't come from any of us. The half-rotted head of Fred Ames slowly turned around, the chest heaving slightly in low gasps of air. Help me. Help me. I remember that I could feel the blood leaving my face so fast that I was on the verge of fainting. We scurried back up the rocky slope, making a mess of tumbling rocks as we made our flight. Tommy was almost to the top when he slipped, causing rocks to tumble down and removing any grip for climbing back up. The rocks and Tommy all cascaded down the hill towards Fred Ames, who was still calling. Help me! Tommy tried desperately to grab hold, to maintain control and haul himself back up the hill toward us, but he couldn't do it. He slid right down to Fred Ames, landing about a foot from his torso to Tommy's utter horror. 
I have never seen someone have such a look of pure horror as Tommy did that day. His face went as pale as a sheet. His eyes bugged out so far that they could have popped out of their sockets. He was frozen, staring into the rotten face of Fred, glaring into the empty holes where Fred's eyes had been, straight into the open maw that was hanging on by a few strands of tendons, with a tongue black as tar. Help me. I'm hungry. Fred lunged at Tommy and grabbed onto his right arm, trying to pull him down. Tommy screamed a blood-curdling scream of fear and terror as he kicked and yelled. Get the fuck off me! Get off me, asshole! Get off! Let go! Fred was relentless, refusing to let go. His grip was like iron, maybe from rigor mortis. I looked at my friends, who were all frozen in fear and staring at Tommy's situation. I had no idea. Guys, throw rocks now! We have to help Tommy! From the tracks, Sean, Mark, and I chucked one rock after another at Fred, trying not to hit Tommy. Dozens of rocks flew down and most missed Tommy and Fred, and one hit Tommy in the ribs. But one large rock that Sean hurled hit Fred's skull, caving it in with a sick, wet thump. Fred finally let go and flopped into the ground, slowly sliding his way back down into the creek, lifeless again. Tommy scurried up the hill. This time, he had no trouble finding grip. None of us had ever pedaled that hard in our lives. Once we were back at Tommy's house, we told his mother about finding the body, but we had agreed to leave out the unbelievable details. His mom called the police and reported Fred Ames' body. Nobody had called 911 about poor old Fred Ames being hit by that train before her. I'm not sure if the conductor just didn't realize they ran him over, or they just decided not to mention it. We never went back to that spot. We were all too afraid, but we felt easy thinking that he was gone now. Tommy later told us that Fred's grip was ice cold, even though it had been boiling hot that day. None of us could find an explanation as to why, or how Fred was even still alive. I have often wondered this, though. What would have happened if Fred had managed to bite Tommy? Tommy?